When it comes to listing clothing items on eBay, figuring out the types of materials can be a daunting task. With over 45 different types of material content in the item specifics drop down menu, it can take a while to master each type of material when you are listing on eBay. So in this video, we're going to be going over this is part three of my material deep dive going over the types of materials that eBay has to offer and that may, you may find when you're outsourcing and also giving just a brief description on what, on what each material is and just going a little bit more into the details of those materials. It's, it's a lot to learn and especially if you are a beginner, it can be kind of like a you know, overwhelming. So let's get right into it and not waste any more time. And if you have questions, leave them in the comment section. I'll get to them as we continue on through this lesson. So let's see here. We have starting it off. We have hemp. Hemp is a common material you're seeing more in production nowadays, more for its sustainability. So hemp fabric is a textile made from fibers of the hemp plant that is strong and durable and eco-friendly and has a variety of applications in clothing and textiles and industrial products. Hemp is known for um, you know, being really strong and really durable fabric. If I find hemp out in, when I'm outsourcing, I pick it up no matter the brand because I know that hemp um, textiles and hemp clothing has more of an in-demand and higher average sale price because it is more of a supply issue. You're not seeing a huge supply of hemp uh, materials out there, but you're seeing a higher demand for hemp um, products. So whenever I see it, doesn't matter the brand, I pick up any hemp products. So next we're looking at uh, Henequin. Henequin is a strong uh, reddish fiber obtained from the leaves of agave um, native to Yucatan. Uh, Henequin has been used for coarse fabrics since prehistoric times. Um, similar to Sisol, Henequin is a coarse stiff fiber that is used for making ropes and twine. So there's a lot of fabrics on this part three of this series in particular that you may never find um, some that you may never even heard of and this is one you know it's gonna be more rare and if you do find this type of fabric out there you may want to consider picking it up because you're seeing that it is a very uh you know niche and rare type of fabric to be found so if you find henequin out there you may want to do some research and and due diligence on you know if it fits within your margins you might want to consider picking that up that would be a first for me so Capoc. Capoc is a moisture resistant, quick drying, resilient, buoyant fiber. The fibers contain both lignin and woody plant substance and cellulose, a carbohydrate. The inelastic fiber or floss is too brittle for spinning, but it weighs only one eighth as much as cotton. So that would be a first for me as well. If you find Capoc out there, um, do some research. You know, you may have something pretty valuable on your hands. Um, you know, and you're probably going to see a lot of these fibers coming from, you know, Europe, Asia, um, some other countries that you're just not going to find here being produced in the USA. So, uh, hey, getting over to the comments. So, how are you? I hope you're doing well, and I hope this can be valuable to you. Um, I know that when I was first starting on eBay, you know, um, in starting to get listing clothing, I was really unfamiliar with a lot of these materials that we're going to be talking about today. That's why I felt like I needed to put this out there and put the information out there so you can go back and replay it and start to really master some of these materials. And, you know, you know, the common ones, wool, cashmere, silk, you know, those are great, but there's more to it when you're listing clothing on eBay. And I hope you're doing well, Mojo Mama. Thank you for watching. So let's get back to it. Leather. Leather is a common one we find all the time, but it's really about making sure is it real leather or faux leather. So leather is any fabric that is made from animal hides or skins. Different leathers result from different types of animals and different treatment techniques. I always pick up 100% leather items. I don't care about the brand. 
and linen as well. I always pick up linen. I don't care about the brand. I'm going to pick up linen. Linen is a textile made from fibers of the flax plant. Linen is a very strong absorbent and dries faster than cotton. Because of these properties, linen is comfortable to wear in hot weather and is value and is valued for use in garments. So I tend to sell a lot of lemon, lemon, linen in Florida, um, you know, New Mexico, more of those humid, drier climates um, where it's more, it's warmer, um, you know, versus more like the Northeast and Northwest. So I don't find a ton of linen, but if you do live like in Florida, uh, you're probably going to find a lot more linen products when you're out sourcing. So llama, llama. Uh, it's part of the camel family. It's typically found in South America. They are fine undercoat is typically used for garments, while the coarser outer hairs are more commonly used in rugs, wall hangings, and ropes. So I've yet to find anything llama. Um, I have found alpaca wool. Um, it's a little bit different, you know, but um, if you find anything llama, that might be something, you know, you might want to consider picking up because it does have great value and the demand is there. So one thing I wanted to bring up was you can find it in the comment section down below or in the description down below is my free ebook. Um, I put together my top 50 brands with current sell through rates on eBay and you can download it and have it on your phone or have it just as you know, something you can research. Um, it has 50 brands with a description of what that brand specializes in with the sell through rate that is current and up to date. So you're able to just, you know, have it on your phone when you're outsourcing and maybe you do find something and you can find it on the brand list then it already has the sell through rate and you know you can be comfortable picking up that item and knowing what's the amount of time you can sell it in so you know i have a few brands like arcteryx on there which is like a no-brainer um, bad birdie and you know just just really wanting to put value back to you as far as what I have learned in the reselling business is like it's really important to have a brand list no matter what you know just have like a good certain of 20 to 30 to 50 brands that you find time and time again and that you've picked up and sold time and time again and just have that as your foundational brands and constantly be um, adding to your brand list because things are always changing in the economy and with styles and supplies and demands you know and and it's really important to just keep adding to your brand knowledge and what i might find in my area may be different in your area so research some brands that are being sold in your area and you know if you keep finding the same ones over and over again and you keep selling them then you might want to consider saying like i'm I'm devoted to this brand and I'm going to keep picking it up until the sell through rate changes. So this is just my top 50 brands. You may have never heard of some of these brands on here, but I highly suggest downloading it and putting it on your phone and just seeing, you know, if you are able to find some of those, um, it can be very helpful, especially when you're a beginner just starting out. So. Let's get it back into it. Lyocell. Lyocell is a natural man-made fiber made of wood pulp from sustainable tree farms. Lyocell textiles are created through the use of nanotechnology in an award-winning closed-loop process that recovers or decompresses all solvents and emissions. So when I pick up a ly Lyocell garment, you can tell it is different than cotton. It is different than polyester. It's very similar to like when you pick up linen it's very lightweight it might not be stretchy at all or pliable um lyocell is a decent brand a uh, decent material to be looking at when you are sourcing um and you're gonna see it like a lot with women's tops and women's blouses blouses be made up of lyocell and manila hemp manila hemp is a plant known as manila hemp is a great economic importance being harvested for its fiber also known as manila hemp extracted from leaf stems so just a different type of um, breed of hemp you know a different type um, hemp is always very durable very sturdy it's not stretchy so you know like like i said it's just i always pick up hemp anything because it typically even a hemp t-shirt is typically going to be selling for a lot more than just a plain cotton shirt right no matter um you know what style so 
So hemp always a good one to be looking out for. Uh, Motocrylic. Motocrylic is a synthetic poly, uh, copolymer. Motocrylics are soft, strong, resilient, and dimensionally stable. They can be easily dyed, show good press and shape retention, and are quick to dry. So I've seen that in um, a lot of acrylic blends and um, a lot of knit sweaters. You'll see that type of material in the in those t you know types of products. Uh, modal modal fabric is a bio-based fabric that is made from spinning beech tree cellulose. Modal is generally considered a more eco-friendly alternative to cotton because beech trees don't require much water to grow, and therefore the production process uses about 10 to 20 times less water. So, you know, I've picked up modal, and it is similar to like you. You will just know when you pick up something like modal linen lyocell it'll just have a different feel to it it'll be more lightweight and um, you know just really good to get familiar in using those keywords in your titles in your product description and making sure you're checking the correct material contents of the tag and putting it in those um, recommended item specifics is going to help your items sell faster and also be found in search which is the goal of all of this is to help master these materials so you can create better titles have better keywords and get your items from point a to point b we're not in the storage business we're in the money making business so the more that we can master and acquire knowledge the better we can command the more price we can command for these items and the better the buyer can find these items through the ebay algorithm so uh, mohair. Mohair is a fabric or yarn made from the hair of Angora goat, both durable and resilient. Mohair is notable for its high luster and sheen and is often used in fiber blends to add these qualities to a textile. Yet to find this one out there, but you know, if it comes from anything goat, um, you're going to probably be having a, be able to command a higher price for that type of material no matter the brand. You're not going to see Walmart brands being made of some of these materials because they're too expensive. Nylon. Uh, nylon is a type of plastic derived from crude oil. Mm. This plastic then put through an intensive chemical process resulting in a strong stretchy fiber that make it useful as a fabric. So nylon is something you would see at Walmart, Target, you know, it's not like a, a type of wool or cashmere that you would see at these lower end brand, uh, stores. So nylon, you're going to see it common in like sportswear, athleisure, um, active wear, you know, in stretchy, you know, also soft shell jackets will have the nylon outer shell. So good, get co good familiar with nylon and, um, you know, you're just going to see it in more jackets and stuff like that. Patent leather. Patent leather is a coated cowhide or lambskin leather finished with a glossy, impermeable surface. The coating is created using several layers of drying oils, resins, or varnishes to create a shiny surface. So different than just traditional leather, um, you know, you would be able to tell just by its sheen and by its look that it is a patent leather product. So polycrylic fiber, polycrylate, a manufactured fiber in which the fiber forming substance is any long chain synthetic polymer compressed of a greater than 25% by weight of acrylate units and less than 2% by weight of acrylion acrylia trial units. So obviously this is a very synthesized uh, non-organic material. Um, you know, you're just going to see these types of materials being used in cheaper products. So the more that you see polymide, polyacrylic, um, you know, they're just kind of branches off of acrylic, just um, synthesized in a different way. And it's cheaper to produce those types of fibers. So you're going to be seeing it used in cheaper clothing. So, you know, if you see these long words that you can hardly pronounce, you know, it's probably going to be coming from a lower end brand. Polyacrylic. Polyacrylic is a synthetic fiber that has a soft feel similar to that of wool and has a heat insulating effect. Machine washable up to 40 degrees, suitable for the dryer. The natural fibers tangle less due to the fact that they 
that the fibers have a low density and are very light. Wow. So, you know, like I said, these are going to be more lower end types of brands that are going to be putting these materials in their textiles. Polymide. Polymide is a synthetic material patented in the 1930s by the famous American company DuPont. It is also known as nylon, produced in the form of long, thin filaments. Polymide has an elastic structure and was first used with great success to provide ladies' stockings. So these, these are all, all these materials that we're covering right now are materials that are in the item specifics drop-down menu. And, you know, they have a lot, some materials have similar names, like polymide, also known as nylon. So what I would always put is what the tag says. So whether, you know, because the end buyer is not too familiar with these terms, right? So you just really want to put what the tag is saying. So if it says polymide, you're going to put polymide under the item specifics material drop down menu. It's important to just do that so you avoid returns and any confusion from the end buyer. So polycarbo polycarbamide is a it's polyurea urea, urea for short is a two component coating that is extremely resistant to both physical and chemical impacts. Polycarbonide is resistant to a variety of chemicals and fuels, also completely waterproof, frost, and UV resistance. So, yeah, that'd be one that you'd want probably see in more, uh, you know, soft shell jackets, um, waterproof gear, rain gear, you know, stuff like that. Polyester. Polyester is a category of polymers that contain the ester functional group in every repeat unit of their main chain a specific material it is commonly refers to a type of polyethylene so polyester yeah you're gonna see it in like leggings you're gonna see it in any type of stretchy gene material you're gonna see it be incorporated in tons of other um you know active wear and stuff like that and you know not a high-end type of material but you're seeing polyester be put in almost all types of clothing um you know a lot of women's tops have polyester in them um you will be able to tell as you keep sourcing and picking up um, items you're going to know the difference between polyester and cotton there's quite a big difference in the touch so polyester blend polyester is a synthetic material that is loved for being machine washable, wrinkle resistant, and low priced. Sometimes polyester is blended with other fibers to create richer textiles or to add some stretch for added built-in ease in fashion apparel garments. So yeah, going back to is just th those are the types of materials that are added into like leggings, you know, spandex. You'll see polyester blend and you'll see, you know, polyester 90%, spandex 10%. You know, that is where I would put polyester blend under the drop down menu, then hitting polyester and spandex. So it's just, it's going to help you save time when you're doing hundreds of listings over the course of your eBay career. Polyethylene. Polyethylene fabric is a lighter type of uh, architectural fabric consisting of a woven scrim protected between two outer layers of plasticized coating. So, that's just one you're going to have to get familiar with touching, you know, polyethylene. Um, you know, a, a lot of these fibers that are in this part of this uh, lesson are synthesized. You know, they're all chemically produced. So, you know, they're probably not as desirable as like a cashmere sweater or silk or wool. You know, and those are the ones that I really stick to. I'm not out actively searching for polyethylene oh is that polyethylene you're holding you know it's just like yeah you know these but it's good to be familiar with them so when you go out um, when you do your listings you know what to put in that item specifics so polylactide is a linear alphatic thermoplastic polyester derived from 100 percent renewable sources such as corn and the most polymer is compostable However, most initial uses were limited to biomedical applications. 
such as sutures and drug delivery systems due to availability and cost of manufacture. So polylactide is an item specific. It is a in the drop down menu, but I have yet to ever check that as a material type. Maybe I just haven't found it, but maybe you have. Um, just more, you know, rare. I'm not seeing it in the in the types of clothing that I pick up. But it is there nonetheless, in case you do find something with that. Polypropylene is a fabric and textile made um, from PP, which is a thermoplastic polymer commonly used in food packaging, plastic furniture, films, automotive parts, and medical devices. Polypropylene. Polyurethane. Polyurethane is a compo is a composite material made of one or two more layers of polymer resins joined by urethane links. It's woven or non-woven textile backing such as polyester, cotton, nylon, and ground leather. So polyurethane you'll see in like faux leather and um, you know fake leather products. You will see instead of it saying genuine leather, it'll say a combination of polyurethane and other types of materials. Ramy. Ramy is a natural fabric coming from the Old East and perfect sustainable alternative to silk. Find out its applications. Also called China grass or Ramia, Ramy is a fabric obtained from the natural fibers just like linen or bamboo. Discover its features and how to take care of it correctly. So I've found a few Ramy garments and yeah, it has the same feel of like a lightweight, non-stretchy uh, type of material. And you'll be able to tell just by the touch, and it might be Raimi. And in that case, you would put it in the item-specific drop-down menu and also a good keyword for your titles on eBay. Silk. Silk is the strongest natural protein fiber composed mainly of fibron. Silk is a shimmering textile known for its satin texture and famous for being a luxurious fabric. The most common silk is produced by silkworms, small creatures which mostly live on mulberry leaves very interesting right so silk is you know there's not a lot of supply just the way it's produced it's not chemically enhanced it's not synthesized in a factory so silk is for me is always going to be a pickup i'm going to pick it up no matter what um, i don't care the brand i'm always going to pick up silk products hey bobby loves to thrift hope you're doing well Hope the weather is good in Ohio. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Appreciate you. Spandex. Spandex is a synthetic fabric that is prized for its elasticity. Contrary to popular belief, the term spandex is not a brand name, and this term is used to generally refer to polyether, polyura, copolymer fabrics that have been made with a variety of production production processes. So spandex is going to give that stretchiness to those garments that you are picking up. Um, not just spandex, but it is um, added into like uh, jeggings. You'll see a little bit of elastane um, to it. So it will make it that those jeans that would be 90% cotton would make them stretchable. So you'll see a lot of spandex in leggings, in athleisure products, um, in compression shirts. So just, you know, a good keyword and, you know, make sure you're checking that as well on the item specifics. Suede. Suede is a good one. I love to pick up suede. Suede is a type of leather made from underside of the animal skin, giving it a soft surface. Suede is usually made from lamb skin, but it is also made from other types of animals, including goats, pigs, calves, and deer. Suede is a softer, thinner, and not as strong as full grain traditional leather. So suede shoes, suede hats, suede shirts. Um, I'm picking up suede no matter what. This is live, Guitar Missy. I hope you're well. If you have questions, um, you know, drop them down and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Bobby loves to thrift. It's freezing 25 degrees, but the sun is shining. It doesn't that make the difference when the sun is out, even though it's 20, it always gives you a little bit of hope because 
it's not snowing it's not freezing rain um it's about 32 degrees here but the sun is out and you know it's nice to just have the sun hit you and appreciate that it's out <laughs> yeah so better than you know 10 feet of snow yes live bobby says thanks bobby right on yeah so um it's just really important to you know if you're a clothing reseller and you want to do it for a business long term and you can see yourself doing it long term you know and you want to hire employees and you want to hire sourcers um getting to know the materials that are readily available in your area in knowing that, hey, I live in Florida, I'm going to find a lot of linen, I'm going to find a lot of lightweight uh, silk, you know, a lot of um, stuff that is going to be worn in warmer weather, then you can start to strategize going like, hey, I'm going to be out looking for this constantly because it is in su the supply is there when I'm at the Goodwill Thrift or the Goodwill Bins or when you're out doing bulk buyouts. You're going to be finding more of these materials versus me. I'm not going to be finding things like silk and linen very often because, you know, in, in Oregon, it's, you know, warm three months out of the year where in Florida or, you know, more in the south is going to be warmer, right? So just put that, you know, in your mind that, hey, maybe I might want to be a, an expert in materials so I know what I can command for those for the prices when I'm listing it and um, you know just really get familiar with what is available you know for me I wouldn't be researching linen and silks too much because I'm just not finding it as often that's just because I live in Oregon so um, so suede is awesome Sun, this is a new one for me. So sun is a based fiber which is obtained from the outer bark of the stem of the sun plant. It comes from under the species Croctillaria juncea and family of the legume. It is also known as sun hemp, Indian hemp, Bombay hemp, rattle pods, and madras hemp. It grows to a height of one to four meters. Now I wonder how many people are listing clothing on eBay and checking that as an item specific. You know, it is, it's probably not too many. Um, so if you do find anything like that, um, my, my um, suggestion would just be do a lot of research so you know how to price that type of material and what it's out there. And heck, you maybe even want to keep that. So uh, try vinyl. Try vinyl is a fiber formed from acrylio nitrile terror polymer and chlorinated vinyl monomer and a third vinyl monomer which of none of which represents as much as 50 percent of the total mass elastodyne so you know vinyl we do see it out there i don't see it very often but you know kind of like that soft shell feel to it um you know vinyl coats um, raincoats, stuff like that. It's a water repellent material. The next one is my favorite. And if you ever find Vicuña anything out there, you pick it up. Go type in Vicuña t-shirt on Google or on eBay and just tell me what they're selling for. They're selling for an extreme amount of price that you would never even think. So Vicuña wool refers to the hair of the South American Vicuña, the animal of the family of Camelidae. The wool has after the wool has after Satosh, the second smallest fiber diameter of the animal hair and is the most expensive legal wool. Vicuña is the most expensive material that you can find. And, you know, if you're outsourcing and you find it somehow, um, you just pick it up as fast as you can, no matter the price. And you just do some research on Vicuña and just go check sold comps for Vicuña uh, anything and you'll be in shock. Viscose. So viscose is a great option if you're looking for a lightweight material with a nice drape, a lustrous finish, and a soft feel. It is relatively inexpensive and can convey luxury for a much lower price point. It also blends well with other fibers like cotton, polyester, spandex. So viscose, 
kind of similar to rayon they're just they're they're very similar just in the way that they're produced is different the way that they're you know enhanced so viscose you know in the drop down menu when i have a garment that is rayon uh like a rayon top um there's fabric type and then there's material type under the additional item specifics so if i have a rayon blouse i'm going to choose viscose in my materials item specifics and then when i go to the fabric type i'm going to choose rayon as my fabric type that way it just avoids any buyer confusion that they know that this is viscose and it's just similar to rayon um so that's what I do in that case because they are very similar. Wool. Wool is a fabric made from the natural fibers that form the fleece of animals such as sheep, goats, rabbits, camels, and more. This raw material is primarily made up of keratin-based proteins, which makes wool a remarkably elastic material. Wool is one of my favorites to find, source, pick up, um, not only is is it abundant in my area, but um, you know I'm a, I'm able to source it on a relatively cheap scale. So um, you know if you do live in a colder climate and you do see a lot of wool coats, wool blazers, you might want to consider picking it up, uh, no matter the brand. So. Bobby loves to thrift. I sell full time mostly denim and shoes. Did sell a linen Brian dress today. Nice. That's good. Yeah, it's, you know, things are heating up, so I'm selling a lot more shorts, um, a lot more dresses nowadays, and it's a good sign because um, I had been picking those types of items up all winter in expectation of them selling here soon. So it is nice to see, you know, more of those lightweight types of items um, head out the door. That's awesome. Guitar Missy says, wow, never heard of it are wools mostly vintage so you know it's you know it just depends on uh you know where it's made um it's a paper tag um yeah and you know there's a lot that goes into what is vintage you know so you know a lot of people will speculate it just takes time doing the research on like you know a good indication for me if something is vintage is it's gonna have first thing would be like a paper tag you know you don't see many paper tags today so uh, you see more of like the polyester tags or the um, print tags that are printed on the garment so if you see something with like an older looking tag or a print tag um, a paper tag you can then start to research from there so yak material and this was the final material of all of those material types on eBay, yak fiber is the term commonly used for uh, to refer to uh, yak fiber wool produced from coat hair of yaks, a long-haired bovine mainly found in the Himalayan region. So if you find anything yak out there, that's awesome because you're going to find something that is not in a huge supply but maybe in more demand and most of these fabrics that we covered today that are you know i would say about 50 percent of them are you may never even find but it's just good to know that if you find that out there you may have something that you bought for a dollar and that resells for four or five hundred dollars on ebay and which is the whole goal of of doing these lessons is that just to help you you know wherever you're at in your ebay journey um, just to bring some value to you to you know freshen up on your materials um, you know I'm, I'm a full-time clothing seller so this is something that i want to master and really take what i've learned and help other people out there um, you know if you want to see what what types of items that we're selling on a daily basis in our ebay store you can check out this video right here and it kind of covers the way I source my items, how I source them, and what those items are selling for. So I hope that this was valuable for you, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.